Hello. Man, I think he just wrecked me. I don't know about you guys, but that worship. Where are you guys? I mean, wow. That was extraordinary. That was just rich. And uh, I really, <laughs> y'all are so funny. I, uh, on the way over here, I was thinking, I am not messing up my face. And the Lord was like, well, you can't have control of that either. So if there's any control left in me, he's going to take it. Because I'm going to let him. Lord, help me with that. How many of you can relate? A little bit of control. It's just kind of like, yeah, I got I to gotta kind of keep it together. Um, no, I was a total wreck, and I, I let it go. So if I'm a mess up here, that's okay, because it's all for him. Well, it is so awesome to be with you guys tonight. Uh, my name is Sherry Blunk. Um, I am out of Impact Church in North Little Rock. <laughs> Some of our girls over here. Um, I am married um, to Philip, and we have three adult children, and it feels very weird to say that, because the last one was just sent off to college about a month ago. Mind-blowing. Um, I don't know if we can really call them adults. <laughs> Maybe. Anyway, one of them, my oldest, is 29, and my middle is 25, and my youngest is 19, so... Um, that is, that's the story of, of me. Uh, y'all, uh, I know this weekend is set aside as a very, very special time specifically for you. Don't look to your sister. This is for you individually. I know you're going to think of people that like, they need to be here. They need to hear this. But you know who showed up? It was you. And so the Lord had a plan. He got you here. He saw before you ever got here, he went before you. And he got you here. And how many of you have gone through a few things this week that you're like, ah, uh, you know, okay, me too. <laughs> me, too. <laughs> me too. Even just today, just the little things that kind of pop up to trying to get there. But, you know, God's grace is on us. And we prayed this church is amazing. They have prayed and prayed and prayed. We have prayed. But Stacy, I mean, Lord bless you. Uh, she really had this vision in her heart. And when we first spoke about it, she said, I just want to be with these women. And it captured me so hard. She just, she just wanted to love on you. And I think that everything that this whole team, Stacy and her entire team, if you've done anything in, to, to help with this conference, would you raise your hand? There's a whole lot of them. Um, God bless you, because I see the t intentionality that has gone forth. It's been very intentional. Did you get the little giddy bag? You like feel the love? Nice shirt. All the goodies inside, so sweet, so precious. So thank you, Stacy. Thank you, team, for all of your work. So this week, um, we had some just crazy things going on that was just trying to keep us from, you know, staying focused. It's really about staying focused on him. And um, that's really, ultimately, if, if the enemy can steal your focus... He can also steal your action, and then he can steal your strength. You, you can relate with that, where you're just like, I'm weary, I'm like tired, I'm fatigued, or whatever. And then if he can do that, then he's got you in a place of vulnerability, um, a place where he can come at you that, um, that, that's not good. Ultimately, and the Lord is wanting to this weekend bring all of that back into alignment. And maybe these are things that just happened this week. Maybe these are things that have happened over the last couple of years. How many of you can relate to 2020, 2021? Come on, it's going to be 2022. You know what I'm talking about, the C word, COVID? Yeah. 
we've all kind of experienced some really major challenges. Um, just uh, before I jump in, um, just a few months ago, you guys prayed for my husband. Um, in July, he wound up in the hospital with COVID pneumonia, double pneumonia. Um, was not pleasant. It was very serious, very, very uh, touch and go and very serious. Um, uh, and not only that, but a couple of very close friends, um, and I'm sure all of you know, and I, I want to just broach that subject very tenderly and say, the Lord knows, and he wants to heal any grief and any hurt. Sometimes the grieving is not that you lost someone, or it might be, or it could be the grieving is the, the grief of not being with your friends, or the grief of something has changed, and it's not the same anymore. It feels so different, and I just want it to get back to the same. You hear that over and over. I want it to get back to the same. And the Lord is leading us, really, He's leading us into a new era. It's a new era. It, it's like we're resisting and we're pushing against the circumstances. It's a challenge. I get it. It's a challenge. But if we keep our eyes on him, he'll lead us right in to the opening of a new book, a new era in your life that you have the opportunity to partner with and step into. Amen? And so I want you to see this weekend as an opportunity to see that new book, the first page or the cover of that book opening for you. Amen? All right, well, let's go. I want to go read the verse again because the foundation verse for, uh, for our weekend is so awesome. Um, I don't know about you, but what Stacy said was so powerful. My, 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 my. All right, so let's go to Matthew 7, 25. It's okay if I just jump right in. Y'all okay? All right. All right. And I want you to know that um, I seem really together right now, but <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm not. I'm, I'm not because I'm totally given to him. So whatever he wants to do is what we're going to do. And I mean it. Like, if he wants to do something, we're going to do it. Uh, at least I am. I'll tell you that. I've learned. And I'll share that a little bit later. Okay, so in 525, I want to read to you. All right. And the winds came. The rain came, the floods rose, the winds blew. Started with the rain, it's just a little trickle, trickle. And then the floods started rising, it started getting worse. And then the wind started blowing. But that house, that's you did not fall because it was founded on the rock. Now, I, it's the rock we know. <laughs> We're going to talk about Jesus, the rock tonight. The rock, the foundation that we stand on. And I, I have a, I almost didn't do this, but I have a close friend that shared a video with me. And it was just yesterday. And I felt like it was profoundly prophetic. Pro profoundly prophetic. Um, she, show, she made this video. And she was out on a photo shoot. She is a hair stylist and makeup artist. And she was on a photo shoot. Um, actually taking pictures and helping with um, makeup and hair for a bunch of women for a women's conference. How interesting. How interesting. And she was videoing one of the other women, and it was 
just, would you mind just, I'm not going to stop talking. Do you mind run the video and listen closely? <laughs> Got it. Oh, brace, baby, brace. 14 minutes, I mean 14 seconds. Did you catch it? All right, run it one more time. Can you do it one more time? Focus. 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 Got it. Watch her. She, she, oh, steps. Brace, she stands brace. differently. And she's braced. Is that prophetic? I'm like, are you kidding me? Did you guys talk to Stacy? And she was like, no. She goes, I don't even know what you're talking about. They showed this video. It was so powerful to them that they showed it in their women's conference. And um, just for a moment, and it was, it was just a quick little story. But uh, what I took away, I actually listened to the uh, girl. I know these women. And uh, Tracy, they, they, they put Tracy out, and I don't think you could see it very well. She was in the ocean, and they put her on a rock. She was not on sand. She was standing on a rock. And they were trying to get pictures with her, with the wind, and, you know, all the beautiful photos they do for things like that. Um, and it, those, there was like about four feet deep of water there. You couldn't tell, but there was about four feet of water. And, you know, if she gets knocked off, I mean, she's a mess, of course, but she could get hurt. And she said, this is what Tracy said, she said, um, I had to listen to my friends because I couldn't see all the waves coming necessarily from whatever, because they were coming from all directions. She could see out in the ocean. Many of them were coming, but some of them, if you notice, were splashing up on the side. And her friends were like, focus, focus. And then they said, and she was like, yeah, I'm focused. She did that. And then they said, brace. Well, she, at that moment, she was standing like this. And if you just watch that video close enough, she stood like this. And she leaned in. She leaned in, and that water came. It didn't knock her down. She was on a rock. If she'd been on sand, she was gone. But she was set high up on a rock. Does that sound familiar? And she was bracing in the right posture and leaning. Like, come on, what else she got? What else she got? I'm still here. I'm still here. And so I think it's just a prophetic picture of everything we're doing. I didn't show Stacy because I was like, surprise. <laughs> um, so neat, but that's it. I love the song that we were singing and I can't even remember the words, but the essence of it was, help me to learn, to listen, to learn your ways. There's a line in that song. I, Stephanie, you may have to help me. <laughs> I don't even know which one it was, but it was one of the ones you sang tonight, or one of y'all sang tonight. Help us to learn, Lord. Help us to learn to, first of all, have enough sense to stand on the rock, the rock. And secondly, to be aware of what's going on. I think we're all really well aware of what's going on, but not everything. That's why we have friends on the shore saying, brace, brace. They're watching for her, and they're like, hold on, sister, like, brace yourself. They're coming. And then she takes the right posture, and she leans into it and lets it come over her. And she's like, yeah, I'm still here. And so that is what we are this weekend. We are still here. We are braced. We are ready. Listen, the Word says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It does not say that there won't be a weapon formed against you. It says that the weapon or weapons formed against you will not prosper. And so, <laughs> I mean, come on. 
That's who we are, and we just need to be reminded of this. And y'all, I really don't take this lightly at all, at all. Because if we don't change our mindset, our lives are at stake. Our, our lives and the lives of everyone in our life is at stake. The people we love, their lives are at stake because if we don't choose well, if we don't choose well to stand on the rock, Oh, okay, so I'm going to take you guys, and feel free, you do not have to flip anywhere. I, I go a lot of places, um, but I want you to feel welcome to see it for yourself. So we're going to start out in numbers, if I can get there. We're going to start out in numbers, chapter 20, verse 7. Holy Spirit, do it. Do what only you can do. Do what you're, you love to do. <laughs> he loves to do fun stuff. Okay. So, this is um, where Moses had um, taken the children of Israel to Kadesh. And I think most of you are probably familiar with the story of Moses and the children of Israel. So I'm going to assume that. Um, so it says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod and your brother Aaron, gather the congregation together, and speak to the rock before their eyes. Now, they got in this position. The Lord was telling him to speak to the rock. They got in a position where they had no water. They were in a place where they were really thirsty. Like they were having a really hard time. And they were complaining, of course, because that's what they're known for. <laughs> and so they're complaining and complaining. And Moses goes before the Lord and asks him about this matter. And the Lord says, take the rod and your brother Aaron, gather the congregation together, speak to the rock before their eyes, let them see it. And it will yield its water. So this was a rock in the wilderness, y'all. And the Lord was telling him, speak to that rock and it's going to give some water. Thus you shall bring water for them out of that rock and you'll give drink to the congregation and their animals. So Moses took a rod from before the Lord as he commanded them. And Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together, and they went up to the rock. I, I, I picture this as kind of a really big rock. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't, but it seems like it would have to be. Then Moses lifted his hand, and he struck the rock. I don't know about you, but the Lord says, speak to it, and I'm striking it. Whew, help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. We'll go into that maybe later, but for time's sake. Then Moses lifted his hand, struck the rock twice with the rod, and water came out abundantly, and the congregation and their animals drank. So, a miracle, a major miracle. They had already seen manna. They had seen all kinds of protection, and now they needed provision. They needed provision provision to be able to get through this difficult time. And so God provided. There was a rock, and he said, speak to it. And so amazing, such an amazing miracle. God is always, even in the Old Testament, when things got crazy, um, the Lord was there. Now, I'm going to take you to something that blew my mind. Absolutely blew my mind. And some of you may be like, oh, yeah already seen it. I'll be like, okay, well, I'm learning. Um, <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Now, this is New Testament. Paul is talking about this. He says, moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all of our, pa our fathers were under the cloud. All of them passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses and in the cloud and in the sea. And all ate the same spiritual food, which, by the way, God provided every single bit of this. He's telling a story. He's telling a story of who God is. 
So all ate from the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from that spiritual rock that followed them. Wow. And that rock was Christ. Is that amazing? That rock was Christ himself manifest in a rock. He was provision. It's who he is. It's who he is. And so when the winds are blowing and the floods are coming and the waves are coming and we're standing on a rock, we're founded on the rock, we're leaning in, but guess what? More than that, we have all the provision we need on that rock, in that rock. Oh, it's so good. I just... I just want to ask you for tonight and for really the rest of your life, (laughs) could you please not glaze over anything in the Word of God? Could you please just go, let me think about that. Read it slowly. Think about it. Think about what was going on. Think about how they were absolutely parched to no end. And they're like, water from a rock. This is provision. This is, but the New Testament says it was Jesus. It was Jesus. And over and over in the Bible, it shows us that Jesus was a rock. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Man, I love it. I love, I love the word. So I kind of go into, I go into a lot of word, but, but in John 4, 13, it says, whoever drinks this water will never thirst again. He'll never thirst again. Now, all of this is very um, picturesque, and it's conceptual, and and you're like, okay, but I live my life every day. I got to get up and go to work with those people, and I got to deal with all this stuff. (laughs) I understand. (laughs) But this is the truth. He'll provide. He's the steady rock that keeps you safe. He also provides all of your provision. Now, really, in Psalms, it talks about the rock of salvation, which we know now, it showed us a picture of the rock. The rock is Jesus. The rock of salvation. You have to think about all of the things. The Lord was just pouring rock over me. I'm like, well, obviously it's foundational. But I want to tell you another story. And I'm just going to tell it to you. We don't have to go to it. In Exodus 33, Moses, God had told Moses, he said, take the children of Israel out. And, and, and basically he was telling him to rescue him. And he was like, well, I just, I won't go without you. And the Lord was like, I'll be with you. And he was like, well, show me your your glory. Show me your glory. And uh, which, wow, what a big ask. (laughs) Man, Moses, (laughs) I have to grow up to to be like Moses. I don't know. Uh, But, you know, so so he's like, show me your glory, Lord. I think he's just longing for him. The word did say that God spoke to Moses face to face like a friend. That's how I picture myself with the Lord. He's my friend. He's like my friend. He's my best friend. I don't think of him any other way, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But so he says, show me your glory. And so Moses, he says, hey, you can't look on me and live. So I'm going to have to hide you in the cleft of the rock. How prophetic is that? Just imagine for a moment, Moses is waiting. He's like, yeah, come on, God. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. He's going to come around the corner, and I'm going to get to see him. And then all of a sudden, he just automatically rises up and is placed into this little nook inside of the rock. Jesus. It was a foreshadowing of us. This was a foreshadowing that we have to be in 
him fully in him to be protected, number one, from anything just standard, but we are saved, meaning from what we deserve. See, Moses could not look at the face of God because God's glory was so pure, so pure, and Moses was a man. Now, he was, he was a great man. He honored God. He walked with God as a friend, but he still didn't have the blood of Jesus yet. And so God had to protect him and hide him in a rock that manifested, hide him inside of Jesus. One of my favorite things to talk about, do I have any volunteers? I just need somebody to stand up here with me. Just Okay, come here, come here, Jeannie. I don't know if you're big enough, but <laughs> we're going to pretend. I'm going to show you what hiddenness is. So he's hiding. Thank you so much. I love Jeannie. She's so amazing. Um, so hiddenness, when we get hidden in him, the word says that we died, that we died, and our life is now hidden with Christ in God. So, Jeannie, can you guys see me? Well, maybe a little. <laughs> she's, she's tiny compared to me. So, if you can't see me, this is Christ. Jeannie's Christ for this for this purpose. She's Christ. And if I'm in Christ, you can't see me. And guess what? If I'm in Christ, I don't really care if you see me. I don't really care. Like it I'm like I I don't care if you see me either way. A lot of people are concerned about well, how they look or how they come across or will people think I'm, I'm too much or not enough or whatever it is. But when you're hidden in him, you actually do not care <laughs> because nobody can see anything but Christ. Now, transversely, stand like that. Now, I'm looking at Stacy and I'm in Christ well, I can't see Stacy, but through Christ. That's hiddenness. That's what it means to be hidden. So we are hidden in Christ with God. Amen. <laughs> I love you. I love you. She's a tiny little thing. Um, and that's, that's the beauty of Moses being hidden, but but it was just a foreshadowing, just a foreshadowing of Jesus covering us. You see, he, God sent him, and he bankrupt all of heaven. That was the treasure of heaven, the prize of heaven, the crown jewel of heaven. It was Jesus. It was his son. He loved so much. He sent him to the earth. And Jesus was not forced to die for your sins. He willingly laid down his life. He chose with his will, key point, with his will to lay his life down for you. All of bankrupt, all of heaven bankrupt. There goes our highest, most valuable player, said God. But he knew better. Because he knew he is resurrection power. He is resurrection power. And he rose from the dead for real. For real. That price was paid when he died. The price was paid for your sins and for your separation from God. It was paid. So that when he returned, 
in resurrection power. You rose with him. It says, we died with him. We rose with him. Not only that, it says, we sit in heavenly places. You ever thought about that? Well, of course we do. Because Jesus ascended and sat at the right hand of God, where he still sits, where he still sits. Well, we're co-heirs with him. The word says we are co-heirs with Christ. And if we're co-heirs, we sit beside him. Now, do we deserve to? No. We really don't. So we have to learn how to receive it. And we have to understand that it is by belief only. Only. It's only by belief. You cannot earn it. You can't be good enough to earn it. You can't tithe enough to earn it. You can't be nice enough to earn it. You can't give enough money to the poor to earn it. You can't say enough prayers to earn it. You can't quit smoking to earn it. You can't quit sinning to earn it. It's a gift. It's a gift. Now, why do I say this to a congregation of people who know this? Well, guess what? When we really don't believe it, what do we do? We reach for it. What does that look like when we reach for it? Oh, well, it looks like Sherry thinking that she's not going to cry her whole face off before she gets up here. Control. We work for it. We try to earn it. We, we try to, well, if I do more, I'll kind of get in better graces with God. I've heard, I, don't, I can't even tell you how many people I've heard say that. <laughs> I'm like, are you joking? Because you already have it. You, are, you, can't, you, can't, you can't earn something you're, you already have. It's already in the bank. You've got a billion, quadrillion, bazillion in the bank, and you don't recognize it. And you know why? Because we get desensitized. We just start doing the things. We get up. We pray. We go to church. We give. We go serve on this thing, and we greet on Wednesday night, and we have a little Bible study, and we, and we go to work, and we make money because if we don't work, we don't eat. And, and then if we, uh, you know, we do all the things, and we think, well, that makes me better. <laughs> that makes me better. I'm, I'm doing better than so-and-so because they, you know, they don't really do that. I don't, they don't do it. I mean... God help them. Let's pray for them. (laughs) Come on. Do they believe? You know what? God looks at the heart. He looks at the heart. And if this person genuinely loves and believes God, well, they got it too. And guess what else? If they do, they'll be motivated by love to do those things, not motivated by earning or working or trying a little harder to be better. Stop saying, I'm working on that to get better. Start saying, I'm letting God help me with that. <laughs> I'm letting him help me. He, he's always wanting to help you. In fact, uh, one of the things about Jesus when I was studying this out is Jesus You know, we see him as the rock all through Old Testament and New Testament Psalms. So amazing. But in the beginning, he was the Word. And the Word was God. You can bank on the fact that he's always speaking. If he is the Word, he's always saying something. It's just a matter of if you're listening. Sometimes it's a matter... Not that you can't hear, it's that maybe you're not willing, or maybe you don't think you deserve it. Maybe you think I messed up too much. You see, 
I grew up a heathen. I did. I did. I was raised in a heathen family. <laughs> My mom would be like, stop it. She's born again now, but you know, she, she knows I say this. It's pretty funny. I, I was just raised in a family that um, just wasn't born again, and we didn't talk about God because it was like, oh, oh, that's so private. I mean, it's so private. Don't speak of such a thing. Um, and I remember y'all so prophetic as a little girl, just thinking and saying out of my mouth, I want to marry God. My mom would go, stop that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I want to marry God. When I grow up, I want to marry God. And then I would kind of barter with her. I'd be like, well, can I marry Jesus? Now, I didn't go to church. I guess I, maybe I just heard these things from other people. I, I think I remember picking up books and catching little things here and there because I had really not heard the message of the gospel in its fullness until I was 14. And, and so, but it's funny. I wanted to marry God. Well, guess what? Now I am because we're all the bride of Christ, all of us. Isn't that amazing? So sweet, so prophetic. But anyway, and so I did, I heard the gospel at 14 and I saw, oh my goodness, I do need a savior like really bad because, you know, I wasn't, a, I wasn't too crazy. <laughs> I was bad enough. Um, but I knew I needed Jesus. When I heard the message, I was at this precious little Baptist youth retreat on a weekend with a very close friend. And I was like, yes, I'm going with my friend. We're going to go camping. I did not know I was going to meet Jesus himself. And I sobbed, y'all. I sobbed and sobbed and sobbed and sobbed and sobbed. And my friends were like, there's something wrong with her. They're like, we just go, yes, amen. Uh, they could not, they didn't understand, because they'd been raised. Uh, they had been raised to be like, this is normal. We do this all the time. It's what we do. And I was like, I don't know what it is. Who's Moses? And by the way, is Jesus God? Is God Jesus? What's this Holy Spirit thing? That sounds scary. I really was that confused. I did not know who Abraham was. I had to learn everything. But I had to learn it out of hunger. Because there was no one to, to teach me except for, you know, obviously the church. Thank God I was raised in, at that point, I started being raised up in that church. Well, I got a little, a couple of years into, the, into that church, maybe a year and a half, and I started seeing stuff in the Word, and I was like, but it, but it says... But it says we're supposed to raise the dead and speak in tongues and heal people. Well, where's all that happening? Is that like a different service? I mean, I literally was that ignorant. <laughs> I, I literally was asking, my, and they were like, you are weird. But I was weird because I really did believe. I mean, it was just, it was innocent. I, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know that we had to be so well controlled and look so good and sound so good and have our act together. I didn't know that. I didn't know it. I'm glad I didn't know it. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. It really, it, it really changed my life, and, and I, I, went, I just went all out. <laughs> I wound up in another church that really believed all of what we pretty much believe in this room. Um, and to me, every weekend was meant for going out and witnessing. I, I didn't know any better than that either. So I was like, who's going? We're going to go tell about Jesus. That was amazing. And But I got into college. I had to leave all my church friends and all my support. And... Um, I now see how important that really is because when I got in that setting, I started messing up. Like, it was real easy to go, well, hey, we're just going to a party. I'd be like, okay, I'll go to the party, but I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do anything. But I still want to be friends with you. So because I want to be friends with you, I'm going to show up at the party. And then it became, well, here, have a drink. And then it became, here, have a something else. And then it became, you know, here's some more of that. <laughs> it, it just, it, 
it happens. Like if you're not if you're not focusing in, you're not in the right posture. And I wasn't. I didn't have a community yelling at me, going, "Focus, brace, brace." I didn't have those people because I didn't decide to get myself in a church when I got there. I probably would have developed that, but again, ignorance. <laughs> Um, I should have known better. I really should have known better. But I was still growing, and I really did. It was terrible. It was a disaster, honestly. It was an absolute disaster, and I know I was just an embarrassment. (laughs) But in that, you know, really losing who I was in college brought me to a deeper place when I had... um, an encounter with the Lord that brought me back because there was no one really in my life to bring me back because I wasn't, I wasn't engaged with those people anymore. And, you know, it's funny what condemnation does to you when you feel bad about yourself. You know how you just kind of, condemnation want, makes us want to avoid people because we feel bad about ourselves. Maybe you didn't send them a thank you note and you're like, ooh, or, <laughs> or maybe you didn't, you know, all the simple things. But for me, it was like, they know I was at that bar party and because somebody told them or whatever, and I just avoid. Condemnation drives you further away. Your, your actual thought process and condemnation is this. I've done bad. I must be bad. And I'm scared they're going to reject me. That's the honest part. I'm scared they're going to reject me. I love these people, and I think a lot of them, but I'm scared if I go back to them, they're going to reject me because I messed up. And so that fear then causes you to do the very thing you're afraid of. It causes you, you're afraid of rejection and separation, And so you reject and separate. For real. (laughs) I'm sorry. I know I've seen it played out in so many lives. When we mess up and we know we're not in a good place, instead of moving toward that person that we're afraid is going to reject us, we instead reject and separate from them. It's the same is true with the Lord. We do that with Him when we're like, and, and it's subtle because sometimes it's not, you haven't quite left the church or you haven't quite, you know, gone way off the rails, but there's some areas that are like pretty gray. <laughs> and so you keep them to yourself because nobody needs to know. And I'll get it worked out. I'll work it out. Me and God, we'll work it out. And you never get get it worked out because you're avoiding him too. The very thing you fear is the very thing you're doing. I know this message is for somebody tonight. But God had to reach me through an encounter because I was not in relationship with anybody else. And I had a dream. And in this dream, I was on one side of a football field and um, with my best friend, who was also totally in sin. (laughs) And we were uh, moving boxes. This is in my dream. We were moving boxes on one side of a football field. And moving stuff around. I don't know what we were moving. And I looked across the field, and I could see the back of a giant Jesus. Like I'm looking over here and giant Jesus is like this. His back is to me. And he's facing this huge stadium side of the football field full of people worshiping him. And I'm recognizing some of the people and I'm like, oh, I love them. Oh my goodness, they're worshiping the Lord. I mean, oh. I mean, I was just like taken. I was so, I'm still, Lord, I mean, I still get chills to my core. 
And I saw it, and I was like, what am I doing over here? And I looked at my friend. I said, what are we doing? And she said, we're stealing stuff. And I was like, what? I don't steal things. That's never been my mojo. And, and she, she was like, well, that's what he told us to do. We have to steal things. Well, guess who the enemy is? He steals, he kills, and he destroys. So I recognized I'm on the wrong side. And I, I looked at her, I said, well, I got to go. And she was like, don't go. She was like, if you do, he'll, the bad guy over here, he'll kill you. And I was like, I don't care. And I dropped everything and I started running across the football field. And I got about halfway across it and big Jesus completely turned all the way around and came toward me and scooped me up and threw me on his shoulder I don't even know how I'm getting through this. God help me. (laughs) He threw me on his shoulder and walked me back across. (sighs) Y'all, I I woke up from this dream, and I didn't really know this verse, but he took me to Luke 15, 4. And it says, what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does he not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls all his friends and neighbors, saying, rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. And it goes on to talk about the joy in heaven that takes place. Not the rejection. Not the rejection. Y'all, I didn't know that verse. And the Lord gave me that verse. And I went to it. And I fell on my knees in my bedroom. And I sobbed. I was like, God, I don't, I don't deserve your mercy. His mercy is profound. And it's only when we experience that mercy that we really change. And I was like, God, if you'll have me, like, I want to come back. And I did. And right there in my room, and I meant it. And y'all, I've been back ever since. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. I'm thankful for that. But I had I had to have the courage to go back to the same church and walk in the front door and be like, I'm here. And I had to listen to people say, Well, it's about time. Where you been? And I'm like, if you just knew the goodness and the love of God like I experienced, you wouldn't be saying this to me. People ask me why I'm absolutely crazy passionate for the Lord. Well, this is it. This is it. I really don't care what I look like. I really don't. There are parts where I still need a lot of work, right? I still need to be not concerned about things. But I've given myself wholly to him and being so committed to who he is, the rock. He's our firm foundation. He is that person. Now, what did he do for me? Well, obviously, he showed me profound mercy. But he really did two things. He brought me back to my first love. And in Revelation, it, it says, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Help me. Revelation 2 and 4, it says, I have this one thing against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works. 
you see, he's always there. Like, he's the rock. He's the one who's always there. His love does not change. Even when you think, there's something wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you. You just need an encounter with the Lord, and he'll change you. And it'll be from the inside out, not the outside in. You won't be reaching to try to achieve something or to try to make something happen for yourself or trying to be better or do better because he didn't come to make you a better person. He didn't. He came to replace you. (sighs) He did. He came to replace you. Completely replace you. Doesn't mean that you won't have your same personality. Doesn't mean that you won't have the unique characteristics. He designed all of it for his purposes. He designed it all so that you could be all. If you knew, if you just knew, if you knew that God had a perfect spot, a little niche just for you. You don't want to be like anybody else. Like comparison's over. It's over. It doesn't matter. It's not even important anymore. He's our rock. He's our first love. Our first love. And I know this is simple. But I think in this time, this really complicated time we're in where there's so many, even the church, in the church, against each other. Well, if you took the vaccination, you're blah, blah, blah. Well, if you don't take the vaccination, blah, blah, blah. Really, there's a lot of judgment. A lot of judgment. A lot of harsh words spoken. Well, you should have stayed home. Well, you should have not come out. Well, you're afraid if you don't come. Well, you're you're afraid if you do come. I mean, what is it? I don't even know. I just know. I know him. We cannot be against each other. Y'all, we're sisters. And God wants to totally destroy these walls. And totally destroy this division like it's got to go can we come to one another genuinely and say I'm not right here I really want to get this right with the Lord and I'm not telling you to air all your stuff to everybody I'm saying God places people in your life and if he hasn't would you trust him when somebody asks you a real question, would you just trust him? See, we, we get into this self-preservation mode. And we're like, well, I'm not doing that again because I learned. I'll never share anything again. I'll never share because they said for me to stop talking. And so we preserve ourselves. And we self-protect. And we do it really badly with women (laughs) especially we're afraid of one another and God didn't want that we're supposed to be on the rock in the right posture leaning in together and there should be people in your life that are looking and they're saying brace Brace, focus. And there are others that may be out there with you on that rock, right? We're all supposed to be founded on the rock. The bottom line is, I'm going to ask you in this moment, would you stand up? Holy Spirit. start asking the Lord to show you where you might 
have just gotten desensitized or it just seems like the same thing over and over or maybe maybe you've just not been quite right in an area and you know the Lord's dealing with you tonight to get it right you know this is your opportunity to get it right oh Jesus he's so good he's here y'all He's here because you showed up. And he wants to do this. He wants to totally strip away and remove all of the baggage that you're carrying. Because if we're all honest, we all got something. We all got something because we all need an adjustment. Lord, it's like he's the chiropractor. Work it out in me, Lord. Work it out in me. All right, while you're thinking about, I want you to really think about it. I'm not asking you to just stand here and twiddle your thumbs. I want you to close your eyes and think about, Lord, search my heart. What can I give you that you'll restore, that you want to take and make whole? that you want to just make new in me? What do I need to give you that I'm holding on to with white knuckles? I just don't want to give it up because I just think you're going to make me do something. (laughs) While you're thinking about it, I'm going to read a verse to you and just let it wash over you. I'm going to ask you to engage with the Word of God in your spirit. Just breathe. Nobody's around you. Don't worry about the person on your right. Don't worry about the person on your left, front or behind. It's just you and Papa. Song of Songs, chapter 8, verse 6. He says, fasten me upon your heart as a seal forevermore. This living, consuming flame will seal you as my prisoner of love. My passion is stronger than the chains of death and the grave. He destroyed death, y'all. All-consuming as the very flashes of fire from the burning heart of God place this fierce, unrelenting fire over your entire being. Rivers of pain and persecution will never extinguish this flame endless floods will be unable to quench this raging fire that burns within you everything will be consumed it's all or nothing it will stop at nothing as you yield to this furious fire until it won't even seem like a sacrifice anymore. If this resonates, if any of this resonates with you tonight, would you be bold? Would you genuinely let the Lord have it? Let him have it tonight. Would you come down here? Let us pray with you. I know it's a step. You can, you're going to be okay. We can be vulnerable. We can be truly authentic with one another.